Whilst the Toby the first and only launch from Japanese soil of 2022 ended in a self-destruct order halfway to space. JAXA and IHI have spent the past few months investigating the cause behind these Epsilon 6 failure, and they finally think they have an answer, and if you're here just for that, here's the timestamp, see you there. For the rest of you, I'm Ai Kuni, and let's go over what happened that fateful day. So the Epsilon rocket is a three stage rocket, and the third stage cannot control itself in any meaningful way. To stabilise it, it is just spun up and lit. But if the rocket sees it's not pointing in the right direction, it will not fire. And that's exactly what happened. The rocket was off by as much as 21 degrees, or about 70 Fahrenheit. The third stage did not light, and instead it was ordered to self-destruct so it would land in a predetermined area off the coast of the Philippines. So why was it not pointing the right way? Surely that means the second stage was not exactly under control, right? Yeah, pretty much. The second stage is controlled by means of reaction control thrusters. These thrusters have a pressurized gas, usually hydrazine, which is then expelled using one of eight thrusters to carefully control how the rocket is pointing. These are split in two sets of four, each with their own valves and fuel tank. And one of these sets did not work. When they first analyzed the data they received, they thought maybe the main valve either never received the signal to open or straight up never opened. The pressure on the thruster stayed low, meaning fuel wasn't really flowing anywhere. So this main valve is a pyro valve, a type of valve which is opened by having a small explosive dislodger plate that blocks the pipes. A pyro valve can only be opened once, and then cannot be closed or adjusted again, but at least they're very reliable. To make sure that they definitely open, the pyro valves used for the Epsilon rocket have two control systems and two points where they can be lit. This way, if the first drive fails for whatever reason, it can be tried again. So, if both failed at the same time, then they've been using these for ages without issue, then there must have been a maintenance problem if these parts were to blame. There was not. If the valves then opened, then surely that means the pipes were somehow obstructed. Now let's look a little closer at the graph I showed you earlier. Notice that the pressure increased just slightly when the signal to open the valve was sent. Fuel did enter the system, and then that stream was swiftly cut off. Debris from the power valves couldn't realistically have led to that. Turns out, there was never anything wrong with the valves. The real problem lies with the fuel tank of the RCS, or the reaction control system. The thrusters use hydrazine as a fuel, but to go anywhere, you'll somehow need to pressurize the fuel. They do this, quite simply, by filling half the tank with a gas, nitrogen, separated by a rubber diaphragm which separates the nitrogen from the hydrazine. This way the hydrazine can stay pressurized until the tank is empty. Or rather, um, just fuel of nitrogen. Now this relies on one crucial assumption, the tank doesn't leak. While leakage was tested both before and after welding the tank halves together, there was one part where they could not test for leaks, near the ring where the diaphragm is attached to the tank. Any potential leaks would seal themselves during testing, making them nigh on impossible to detect, but could prove catastrophic in operation, as we saw. If you skip to this part, welcome back, so here's what happened. The rubber diaphragm between the nitrogen and the hydrazine in the RCS fuel tank leaked, allowing hydrazine to get into the nitrogen part and push the rubber closer to the exit of the tank. When the pyro valve opened, the diaphragm got sucked in, blocking the fuel pipes and preventing the reaction control thrusters from firing. The second stage managed to find without it, but when they needed the third stage to be in a specific orientation, they just couldn't. So now we know the problem with the rocket. What do we do to prevent it from happening again in the future? Well, engineers at IHR are considering changing the RCS tanks they're currently using with new tanks based on the ones used on the H2A. It's not entirely clear to me what the exact difference is though. These new tanks will be used on the Epsilon S rocket which was always going to replace the Epsilon rocket starting at the next launch. When the next Epsilon S will first launch is not entirely clear, but what is clear is that I'm excited for it. That rocket has an amazing mission lined up after all. Destiny Plus has a mission to demonstrate technologies for smaller interplanetary missions and will fly by an asteroid, 3200 Phaethon and measure dust in the area. Destiny Plus is just one of three Epsilon S launches scheduled for the fiscal year of 2024, and I'm definitely hyped for it. If you like this video, please share it with a friend, and if you wish to see more like it, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!